welcome everyone today to the 2019 Spring Open House at Cal State Dominguez Hills for Ollie. Uh, today, we're gonna have basically two hours and we're gonna talk about uh, the open house type of functions and then the last hour would be um, orientation type things. I'm gonna do a little short welcome myself and then I hand it over to uh, uh, Dean Kim McNutt. I just wanted to to introduce what I'm gonna call our this year's slogan. Every year I've kind of come up with a little slogan whether I stole it or borrowed it. <laughs> you know you, you've seen in the catalog friends don't let friends miss out on Ollie. Ollie more, live more, and we have a few other ones on the, on the catalog, on the back, that's been here forever. But it really tells us what Ollie is about. Lifelong learning is a shared adventure. It's very, very, very true. But I got to thinking about the Ollie house. You notice I got it labeled, this room here. I don't make any payments, so they may take down the sign. <laughs> but that's one of the reasons why I want you to think about why the Ollie house being in extended education, okay? And our relationship with extended education. And I use that word relationship as they now describe it on social media, it's complicated, okay? <laughs> I don't think there's a better word than to say that, that it's complicated. But my new thing is why, what we love most about Ollie House is who we share it with. And I think that's really appropriate for all of you to take your time to come out, to be retired, okay, to come here to the open house and share your information, especially with hopefully our new members. So with that, because I've got plenty of time to talk, we're gonna introduce the Dean of Extended Education, Kim McNutt. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, thanks. I gotta tell you, I'm just absolutely awestruck to see the full house here in Ollie House, Extended Ed House, whatever you wanna call it. How many of you are actually new here today? This is your first time here. Well, that's good, awesome. Great, welcome. And I guess the rest of you are obviously members, welcome. This is awesome. Lamarco gave me a few talking points and I wanted to, I forgot my two hour speech, so I'm gonna have to give you a Reader's Digest version here. <laughs> Um, 107 of you RSVP for today's event, and I want to thank you for, wow. you know, coming through and being respectful and understanding and patient because, you know, campus did start this last week or so, so we have a lot of students on campus, and that's why we're all here, right, the House of Higher Learning. Um, for the 17-18 year, we had 563 total Ollie members, which is awesome, fantastic. As of today, we have a total of 549 total Ollie members. I want to thank Lamargo for that. Something that happened in the last year, a lot of you were a part of it, but the first time we were trying to instill a culture of giving. And it was awesome that we had a small grant from I think, the Ollie uh, National Headquarters to help us do some fundraising. And our goal was $10,000. We wanted to set a, a modest goal just to try to see what we could do out there and then we can use those dollars to plow back into this. I mean, it helps pay for the food, it helps pay for upkeep on the facility, brochures, all of those types of things. Reduce parking, and um, for the first time, we had never done a campaign specific to Ollie before, we generated $16,456. That's awesome. And thank you all, thank you all for contributing in the room. We had 124 donations. And it didn't matter if it was $10, $50, $100. Every nickel goes back into the program. We take none of it out of it for administration. So this is extended its gift to the community. And one thing that I'm, I'm in my fifth year here, and some of you have heard me say this, I've always been a believer in lifelong learning, as it says here. I used to say K through, K through AD education, but I was actually scolded by a member here last May. <laughs> And I thought she was joking. I, I gave a little talk in this very room at lunch, and she said, I take issue with, with what you said, K through 80 education, kindergarten through 80. I said, I'm sorry, ma'am, what do you mean? She goes, you know what? I'm 90 years old, and I'm still here. That's right. So I, don't, I no longer say K through 80 education. This is awesome. 
you know, it's lifelong learning. It's from everywhere from kindergarten through 90 years of age. And that's what we do in this building. We have 11 classrooms up and down this corridor. We have an OSHA class going on down the hall over here, occupational safety and health. We have American language and culture. We have international students down on the other end of the corridor from Japan and Korea and Saudi Arabia. We have you in this room. We do social work courses in this room at night. We do communication, uh, communication disorder programs here. Everything in between. We offer credit programs, non-credit programs, degree programs. More than uh, we have a portfolio of about 50 academic and non-credit programs that we offer through Extended Ed. So we have something for everybody, which is what I absolutely love about my job. I've been in higher ed 25 years, uh, and it's always been in this arena of, of continuing education. I went to night school myself, um, and that's who a lot of our students are. So I have, even though I love our 18 to 22 year old students across the street over there, I, I do love. You know, those of us that had to work and raise a family and go to school at night and, and were first-generation college students. I was a first-generation college student myself. My dad gave me three choices when it came time to, when I was 18, I was driving with him from our uh, little family farm one day, and he says, uh, Kim, because you're graduating this year, and he goes, I got three choices for you. He says, one, join the Army. <laughs> Two, you can work uh, as your uncle did for this. I'm originally from New Mexico. He says you can get a job working for the New Mexico Highway Department, get a good living, work there 30 years, get a nice little retirement. I thought that wasn't very appealing either. And the third option, he says, you know what, your mom and I, it'll be a struggle, but we'll we'll pay for your tuition to go to the, the university in our hometown. And I thought, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> That's the one I chose. So I want to thank my parents for that all the time. My sister was this is the only the second one in my family, and we came from a big family on both sides to do that. And I love education. Again, I'd love to see all of you here. You've had a wonderful career. Some of you might still be working. Another bit of trivia that I think you might find interesting. <clears throat> Back in the day, a person may have worked one job, 20, 25, 30 years, maybe two different jobs. That's changed now, you're right. Um, I've done, I've read reports now, um, even myself, someone will change a job. They'll, they'll have 10 or 15 different jobs in a career of about 50 years. And they'll change careers three to five times, meaning that you'll do something completely different than the job you did before. And that's just the new normal. I mean, it really is. And again, but that's what I love about what we do here again, because we cater to all of those audiences. If you want to come and get a certificate and get a job promotion in human resource management or project management, you can come here and do that. If you want to go to an Ollie event and listen to a lecture in this very room or watch a video or go watch a play or, or do ballroom dancing, we have that. And so that's what I love about what we do. So I won't take up too much more of your time, but I did want to, again, I think some of you do have it. I draw your attention to this fabulous catalog that Lamar and his team and Nicole, I see her in the back of the room. I want to thank her as well and our student assistants. 26 new courses and or events for spring. So that is fantastic. Lots to choose from. There's no reason not to sign up. And I wanted to draw your attention. This is our other catalog. This is the extended ed catalog that we put out um, three times a year. And it's for, if you want to pick up a certificate, take it home, share it with a friend. And then we also have, I'm hoping if we have some guests from OmniLore. Do we have some folks from Omnilore? There they are. Thank you for being here. Awesome. We have our OmniLore location, for those of you that don't know, for the Beach Cities. It's at the uh, uh, Beach Cities Health District. It's the uh, hospital, the retirement center there off of 190th, roughly, and Prospect. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful location. We operate two classrooms there. Omnilor folks use it by the day and then it extended ed to give us some reach to extend education into the community. We offer courses there at nights on and on weekends. So I want to thank you for being here, show of support. And again, it's a great relationship there. Um, again, we have classes that we offer to folks that say, well, I can't get to Carson or whatever, so we offer some courses there. So anyway, I want to thank you for being here. Thanks to Lamargo. Uh, and the team for putting together a wonderful program. We're going to have some great food later, so I won't take up any more of your time. But welcome and thank you for being here. Starting in January, we're going on our 16th year at Cal State Dominguez Hills. There's 122 other Ollies throughout the United States, all right? And all of them are different, especially us. We're the most diverse group, I think, of all Ollies. 
okay? And we get along well. I love that. But extended education, everything except for our dues and what we charge for the class is given to us by extended education. So I think the term that they use in fundraising is in-kind support. Annually, we get minimally $200,000 worth of in-kind support from, um, from extended education. And that's why when we, we have the dean come out, we want to really thank them, including this room here. This room they have rented out from three to $500,000 uh, per, per session. They charge us nothing. Right? And as long as we follow the rules as to preserving, we don't get thrown out. <laughs> that type of stuff. But it, it really is a good relationship. It's complicated because then we're tied to the school. I've had members think that we get support from the school. We get no support but what we put into it. This is your program. Right? Even before me, this is my third year. Uh, of being the program director, that was in December. And so it's taken quite a while, but we're very, very fortunate. Um, if we look at the program in Long Beach, they have a really great program, Ollie, that's different, but they have no facility on campus. Their, their facility is off campus. So they have to raise money to support the building that they're, that they're renting and leasing into. So let's get started. I was 30 or 40 years a computer engineer. All right? I'm still having trouble with this, <laughs> this, this desktop over here. Uh, and when I started with computers, 1970s, the early 70s, these didn't exist. We don't even consider these computers. The computers I used to work with, they call them uh, mainframes. They would fill this room. Right. And I mean, just the operating system alone was a million dollars, right? And I don't think you owned it just to get your updates and, and everything. So then when you look at this and you think about it, and even worse than that, all of you probably are carrying what you guys call a smartphone, but that's nothing but a handheld computer. But for marketing, they couldn't sell a handheld computer, but they could sell a phone. Because what do we do? What do we like to do? We like to talk, right? <laughs> and you guys, believe it or not, even though you don't want to use a smartphone, you guys are the biggest users, biggest payers, that can still afford a smartphone. So welcome again. This is the cover of our catalog. Uh, there's some pretty neat things there. Let's see if uh, you guys all met Nicole, my new assistant. She's trying to politely control. She, she does have a good point. Just to remind you that the restrooms are on the other side. We can't, normally we would go that side with the food. We, we basically closed off that door. So at any time that you, you need to, the restrooms are in the back there, both men and women. So is there anything else? Not right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've been trying to get you to bring your catalogs because everything is in the catalogs. I get questions all the time and if there's any dispute, the catalog generally takes preference, right? So if I have a date or something a day, please notify us, but generally speaking, the catalog uh, is, the, is the, the correct thing uh, to look at. So, uh, ambassadors. <clears throat> All of our ambassadors that's here today, please stand for me. Come on now, stand up. Check around and look. You can talk to any of our Ali ambassadors about the program. They've been here, they will serve you food today. They're not taking any tips, right? They're not gonna take any tips because well, we only have food for 100 and there's 107 of you. So don't keep them tips. You can give me the tip, maybe I can persuade somebody. But those are our ambassadors, our curriculum committee, Who's on the curriculum committee? Stand up, please. Oh, wave your hand. Come on, curriculum committee. This group puts your catalog together three times a year, right? And we gotta have a security guard, a master of arms, because we be struggling 
trying to get the right information to you. The event committee, and today hopefully with Denise, will introduce to you officially the Speakers Bureau. Now we're looking always, because OLLI is a volunteer organization, we cannot run this program with Nicole and I. We're the only things in the OLLI office, you might call our OLLI staff. Everything that we do is based off of you and the volunteers. So, I've been thinking that, okay, when we talk about committees, people are looking at, oh, I got to dedicate a year of my life, and then, you know, come to the meetings all the time. If you only want to do two days, two hours, volunteer something that you want to, please let us know. That will work. We have enough people, right? We have enough projects. So anything that you're interested in, and you say, well, you know what, I have this day on Thursday. I'll give you a couple of them for this semester. Please volunteer for any committee, because all of the programs, not one, all of the programs are based off of volunteers. So at this point, uh, what we usually do is we have 26 new courses and events. 10 of those are the OSHA Lecture Series, which is a key series for us. The OSHA Lecture Series was started back in 2003 when the OLLI started. But what it is, is uh, a lot of the professors on campus will come and lecture to us on current events or things that they're researching. So we had three locations and we're now down to two. But with the OSHA lecture, there's five in this location, and then there's five at the Levi Adult Center. And I have kind of map for those who have not been to the Levi Adult Center. But they're all new, okay? Some of the speakers are, are, have been with us before. But very, very interesting. So what we do with the, the 26 new is, we will ask the, some of the lecturers or instructors that are here today to give you three to five minutes, no more than five, about their course or lecture so that you can find out about what's happening with the new. So, uh, I don't have any order, but since Joy is first, well, Joy, would you like to come and do yours? I'm calling it American Healthcare System is Rigged Against You, and it's based from a book, An American Sickness by Elizabeth Rosenthal, okay? But not all of us feel that way. Some people say, no, 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 it's not rigged against me. Yes, everybody, everybody, okay? And um, so we're going to go into it a little bit. Oh, there, there's a good idea. Won't universal health care stop this being rigged? Thank you. Thank you for letting me know that. And yes, in part, but it depends on which system we decide to have for the United States. This is just a little bit that I picked up last week because health care is being talked about a lot down. And um, the title of it was 50 Shades of Medicare for All because there are a lot of a lot of people that are putting in their ideas but it's all based on this Medicare for All plans. 56 support the idea of Medicare for All but when they were told that it might, we might all have our taxes raised or we might have waiting times it dropped to 36%. So most Americans really don't understand where we are with all this. It is complicated, not because it needs to be, because it's been made to be. Oh, yes, Maxine, thank you. I will get to that in just a moment. Um, so I just want to point out that this also came out last week. It's called the Partnership for Americans' Healthcare Future. And it sounds like a great organization, right? Oh boy, but they're prepping to an offense against Medicare for all. So who are they? Well, they're the bigs. The big insurance, the big hospitals, the big specialists, and pharma. So they're getting together. And why? They think there's a quiver of fear that America for all, Medicare for all measures, could result in a big financial blow to private health insurers, hospitals, and docs. Those very people that are, that are um, planning an offense. 
So they want to convince us all that a single payer system would deeply hurt our access to vital health care services. And if it's not the right program, it might. Okay? That's why I'm presenting a different one. And Maxine kind of gave you a clue there. So I'm just going to go over this really quick. I know there's a lot of information here. These are our programs um, right now. Employer mandate, huge program. Medicare, that most of us have Medicare, I guess. Medicaid for the poor and the Affordable Care Act. And this, I'm just going to quickly change these. Um, all three of those um, will go into the consumer-driven care, and then we'll talk about that. We're going to keep Medicare as it is. At least that's what I want to do, not just because I have it, but I think that that's the one we do not want to disrupt, okay? And here's all the hospitals for profit and physicians with their issues, and pharma won't no negotiate prices, and private insurance is for profit. Well, they're going to change. It's going to become consumer driven. Physicians are going to get a standardized DMR, tort reform, consumer driven. Pharma. Our governments will, it's got to, negotiate prices like all the other countries do. This is ridiculous. Private insurance, no longer for profit, will be highly regulated, takes the risk, can't make profit on essential services, no more partnership of all the bigs. It's going to be consumer driven. And you see this, this price tag? That's how much our health care costs now. $3.5 trillion a year. And Price Waterhouse Cooper has said it's 1.9 trillion is waste, waste. All those high prices and for other reasons. But with what doing what I just said, probably can bring it down to 2.6 trillion. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. You see all this stuff in the middle, sickness in America. That's the population. We are the sickest of all the high-income countries. We have the highest obesity rate of all the high-income countries, as well as the highest health care. So each one of us has to have an individual responsibility to change our ways if we're part of the sickness. Okay, and the one other thing that I'm going to talk about probably I, I can't answer questions. <laughs> um, um, that it's, there are models coming out there now with AI and some very clever ideas to cut costs and for better care. So the consumer driven model will be able to adapt and pull those in much better than the Medicare for all. So this is the closing. All right. It's not that we don't know about consumer driven, which is the Swiss system. It's just that nobody's putting it on the table, all right? This was done in 2017 and it was in the New York Times. And a group of healthcare experts compared nine countries. And of course, the United States was in there too Australia, um, England, yada yada, Canada. And they determined that Switzerland's consumer-driven healthcare model is the best healthcare system in the world. It has problems, we all have problems, but they've got things under control better than any of the rest of us. Okay. Did I make it? <laughs> but we will have, shortly, about 20 or 30 minutes, we will have uh, the light refreshment. And at that time, we will have an extended period of uh, meet and greet especially want to meet and greet our new members or potential new members and let them know that they're welcome here at Ollie. So you don't have to ask a whole bunch of questions, find them at the break. Okay, right now I'm going to introduce uh, Deborah Stevens uh, with Globus uh, Travel. Um, she was part of our trial run for traveling and we just went to Cuba and I see maybe a couple that went to the Cuba trip and it was described as one of the best trips that they've ever had. So I just wanted to give her three or five minutes to let her know about some, maybe some upcoming things. And again, it takes a volunteer. So we had what I call a, a, the Cuba trip coordinator, Ms. Shirley Smith back in the corner over there hiding. 
but it takes a volunteer to organize uh, things of this within Ollie. So Deborah, Deborah Stevens. Thank you, Lamarga. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> Thank you for coming today and joining this exciting Ali presentation and open house. And Shirley, thank you very much for all your dedicated hard work and effort to help with that Cuba trip. Um, who likes to travel? <laughs> Woohoo! Yes. Okay. You do love to travel. Uh, we. Uh, went, well, I didn't get to go. I've been to Cuba before, a couple of years ago. But um, the group went on a Cuba trip, which was not only an experience of history in the making, yeah, but uh, and it was <laughs> quite a, 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 uh, a trip for them to experience a country that has both capitalism and communism. So. Um, one of the things that I noticed, I really, I really love this Ollie group, and I do work with other Ollies, and Lamargo, you're right, this is the most diverse group, and I love all these shades of color, and that's what you saw in Cuba. And um, I started as a student traveler, and one of the things that I love about traveling is that when you leave your backyard, like we have a beautiful one here in Southern California, but as Joy, where are you, Joy? As Joy was just speaking about our healthcare system and some of the other things going on in this country, I encourage you to go and experience other countries, other lands, other cultures, because when you do, you open your mind, and from your mind, your heart will open. It may take a while if it hasn't already, but one of the things that you'll find in your Ollie book is that there's a lot of different cultures being presented. Black History Month. Have you gone to Africa? Have you thought about what that's like to go and experience those tribes? They have a completely different way of life than we do. The, the animals out on the Serengeti, out in the wild, instead of seeing them in a cage in a zoo, that was a lifelong dream of mine as a child growing up in New Orleans going to Ottoman Zoo and seeing those animals behind those bars. I wanted to see them in their wild, uh, their own wild environment. And it is a slice of heaven, I will tell you. Um, if you're interested, let me know. But the African Studies, Black History Month, I really enjoy learning about other cultures. I encourage you to do so. Uh, Japanese American concentration camps, could it happen again? You're darn right it could happen again. It's really scary what's going on in the, and in this country. I've often thought, where could I go for those four years when we had that announcement a few years ago? You know what I mean? I actually called my boss, Globus, by the way, Joy, is their home office is Lugano, Switzerland. So if they, if they are in Switzerland, with the best healthcare in the world, they must do something right on their tours to get travelers around the world, right? And they've been in business for 90 years. I myself really am um, thinking about, I'm just going to join the Ali group myself because I love some of these programs. And um, it, it really is a wonderful group. You all are so fun and so friendly and um, it, it really is a, a different experience here. So if you're interested in, in finding out about travel or you know, just learning about ideas, they, there's so much world out there, whether it's Latin America, that's some of the courses in your, in your uh, book today, your brochure, or Japan, which is a really hot destination right now. When I say hot, I don't mean hot like that. I mean exciting, <laughs> you know, because some destinations cool off and then other ones, you know, they heat up and that's how we talk about it in the travel industry. And I've been with Globus for over 12 years. I've been to a lot of places, Morocco, Israel. Uh, it, so please, please talk to me, Lamargo, if somebody wants to spearhead a trip and, you know, wants to go somewhere, like Margot said, we need volunteers. Uh, Shirley was a volunteer, she was very dedicated. We worked together on it. And um, it'll be fun, you'll learn a lot, and I promise you, there is nothing better than the gift of travel. Thank you, Lamargo, and thank you, everyone.
Okay, we'll bring up now um, Norma Bates. Hi, my name is Norma Bates, for those who do not know me, but most of the people here know me. Okay. Um, I instruct a class, uh, a crafting class. So, also, I would like to know if anyone is here who has signed up for my class. Anyone here today? One, two, three, four, five, okay. All right. Well, I was told it was full, so that's great. And this is just one of the little things, little perks that we'll make in the class. I, and I have a display in the back of some of the things we will do in our crafting class this semester. So if you have time, stop by, take a look. You may be interested, although the class is full. Okay. <laughs> um, so you might think about it, I might uh, extend it. Uh, it depends on the Margo, if I have enough requests, you know, and uh, time. So please stop by and take a look at some of the things you may be interested in. Even, even if you don't want to take the class, you may be interested in um, having me show you outside of class how to make some of the things. My next. Okay, Amla Lore then. Amla Lore is our, uh, is a, what do they call it, the program that we, that we house out of the Redondo Beach location. So they're going to tell you a little bit about their program. Yes. Hi, everybody. I'm Howard Corman. Hi. Hi. I'm a past, past president of Omni Lore, very involved in membership. I've been in the program for 12 years, and I want to tell you a little bit about it. Uh, I've enjoyed my affiliation with Ollie through the years. Ollie was started in 2003 with us. I joined Omni Lore in 2006 and got involved immediately. So I've really watched the history, and I love seeing a crowd like this. Omni Lore means all knowledge. It's a unique program in the South Bay. You won't find a program of that name anywhere around the country or in the world. And as Lamargo said, we meet in Redondo Beach at the Beach Cities Health Center. Uh, and we believe education is a lifelong process like Ollie believes that. And part of the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute is what we are. And we've been associated with, with the university here since uh, 1992. And so uh, it's been a long time. It's been a wonderful relationship. We have approximately 300 seniors, and we organize what we call study discussion groups. They are conceived of, planned, and directed by the membership. We have no instructors, no tests, no grades. <laughs> membership is open to all who seek intellectual stimulation and the challenge of shared inquiry. And the best part of the qual is the quality of the people you'll meet in Omnilor, just like the best part of Ollie is the people here in the room and the people you'll meet. Um, our study discussion groups are really the core of the Omnilor program. Uh, the concept is what we call peer learning, which means we get together and teach ourselves. The curriculum is self-determined by members of the class and limited only by the imagination of the membership. It's a self-governed organization Members propose subjects they would like to know more about. And we do three trimesters a year, each for four months. We have our groups that meet for two hours, twice each month. So we have eight meetings or a total of 16 hours for each class. And our annual dues entitle a member to any number of courses. And uniquely, you can identify when you can attend, and we can accommodate you. We have a way of, of finding out when people are available and then building our schedule based on when people are available. Uh, we are governed by officers that are elected by the members, and I've had several offices in Omnilor, and uh, we have several here, in fact. Uh, um, Kent. Kent. Kent is here, and he's our treasurer. And, uh, and we have Carolyn, who's our membership chair and our registrar. And then, of course, we have Joy, who's an Omnilorian. And you're on the board now, aren't you, Joy? No, okay, she finished her time on the board. Um, we also uh, really enjoy the lecture series that are done here in the spring and fall and at uh, the Levi Center in Torrance. Uh, we do quarterly forum luncheons in the Las Verdes Country Club in PV. And it's really a beautiful setting. Um, not sure we have to pay for the meal, but we always have a wonderful speaker. And we have one coming up, in fact, this, this Thursday. So uh, it's really great. We have special interest groups. Uh, we have a computer group that we call computer talks. We have a hiking group. We have a bestsellers group where we get to review books. And my wife started a moviegoers group, which is going really well. We've been going to all 
all the wonderful movies that have been showing and we're, our big thing now is the Academy Awards, so uh, uh, we'll, we'll take care of that. We put out a monthly newsletter and it presents a calendar, member profiles, a book list, and interesting informative subjects. And we always get a, a column by Ollie in that newsletter. We have a website that is really good. It's omnilor.org. And for further information, you can join, uh, look at that website. We have a trifold that is in the back, and it'll tell you all about Omnilor. And it also will give you the kinds of courses which go all over the map that we offer. Um, for membership, we're open to all who seek the intellectual stimulation and challenge of shared inquiry. <clears throat> Joining is easy. The one thing we require is that you attend an Introducing Omnilor meeting, and our, we have two coming up that Carolyn will be running. One is on the 21st of February, that's this month, or excuse me, next month, at 10 o'clock at the Beach Cities Health Center, that's a Thursday. And the other one is on the 29th of March, which is at 1.30 in the afternoon. Um, cost. We pay $120 a year for it, plus the Ollie membership. When you join Omnilor, you're automatically a member of, of Ollie. So it's a very intricate and uh, very tight relationship. So if you have a mind that not, that's not ready to retire, we're definitely for you. Thank you, Howard. So Denise, are you ready? No, but I'll come. <laughs> no pressure. Turn the camera on, Norman. <laughs> Oh, no. Denise is one of our co-chairs of the new uh, committee that we started called the Speakers Bureau. And we are really looking for this to help us get into our neighborhoods. What we were thinking was that a lot of us stay in senior communities where you have some friends, and, and we're all over South Bay, um, LA, Pasadena, you'll be surprised at people who have come to this alley because there's four in this area, four or five. UCLA has an Ollie, we, Fullerton, Long Beach, and Irvine. And every one of them is different because they have different membership. And we all cater to our own membership. But we do all, typically we will live in less than, let's say, let's say like a gated community. Or like, who knows New Horizon? Who here says New Horizon? There's 600 potential Ollie members in New Horizon. Why we only got two, All right? So we want to go and, and speak, just as the Amalur people did, to introduce Ollie, very short, and if you have someone that we can speak to, would like to volunteer, again, it doesn't have to be, you know, every week you're attending a meeting or, or going out to do a presentation. Um, it could be just a short term to, to get us into New Horizon. We would appreciate it. Here's Denise. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. morning. Marco pretty much said what I would say. <laughs> I evidently missed the email that I had to get up and speak this morning. And evidently my partner seen it because she's not here. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I think it was last year that they started uh, trying to recruit for Speakers Bureau. And you can either go with someone that likes to speak or you can just be on the side helping them pass out flyers. But what we want to do is try, like he said, get into all the senior citizen places or um, the homes that we know senior citizens, any church groups or anything to try to t um, tell them more about Ali. I started Ali when I was in, um, I took a grant writing program before I even knew about all of the open houses and stuff. And then the next year I said, oh, let me go to an open house. And then I joined a little rowdy group that play, um, play games on Friday and threaten me all the time. But we have fun in that group, so come join that one too. But anybody that's interested in uh, being part of the Speakers Bureau, like I said, you don't have to speak. You can just be on the side and help pass out flyers, take names and things like that. Give me your name and your email address, your phone number so we can contact you so that we can be trained and then go out and just spread the word about Ali. Anybody that has a good time in Ali, we need to spread that word to everyone else. Thank you. What's the name of that, uh, that rowdy group? I'm gonna report them. 
You said they Friday. All, what all, happens on Friday? <laughs> Can't be Tai Chi. Good type of, uh, and social tennis, they've always been rowdy. But people too scared to report them. So it must be fun and games. <laughs> I've been trying to get fun and games to do like maybe uh, uh, a chess tournament or something to get you guys motivated. They don't have any dominoes, so we can't slam on them and make a bunch of noise and things. Because you know, we're in an academic setting. <laughs> you guys have to, you have to act right. So, Nita, are you ready? Okay. I'm hoping Nita's gonna talk about going to Thailand. But let her introduce herself. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nita. And I am is uh, early member and curriculum com, um, committee meeting. Okay. And those of you who know that on the month of October and November, I went to Thailand. 40 years in the United States and turning back to Thailand for 40 days. It's a lot of things is changed. I'm, the first time I was here, I know I got lost. I learned so many things and new things, new food, new people, everything. When I get back to Thailand, I lost. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because it's, I don't know what the street, I don't know anywhere, and I have start all over. So join me on that, um, if you turn to the page of uh, 11. So those is the class memories of uh, Thailand. And I will share to you about what life there in 40 days I've been there. And uh, more than 5,000 pictures that I took. But I have to select what the best one that the Marco was telling me from 10 to noon, so I cannot go over that. But I'm working on the PowerPoint and to show you what every places I went and amazing. You know, all the food and uh, culture, and um, I went on the cruise. I went to um, <laughs> Cambodia, Burma, and um, also Hong Kong, and all over the place for those 40 days. You didn't realize that, how is the, the cruise I went for a week. That is uh, from Italy. So those is five days, amazing fun and casino on the clues and you know how, and those I can tell them that you know how is if they can come here I will take them to Vegas <laughs> because that's on the clues is nothing and don't miss it that event and I know it I heard it's about full now and, and that people sign up for and you can see, and I'm planning to take the tour to Thailand. La Marco will be the first one to sign up. <laughs> okay, and then um, also I have another class. It's coming soon in uh, February 14, Valentine's Day. That is San Antonio Winery. So please join me, and is the tour is free, and um, the test, if you like to, it's going to be five dollars or ten dollars. Uh, it's up to you, or you don't have to. And um, join me, meet you there. And you know the you I, on the on the catalog is saying you have to sign up today. Uh, but if you have time until the 14 and page 11, that class number is 23988. You can make a note and sign up, and I will help you take it to the next door. <laughs> okay, and then pet the Marco look at the clock. Well, I still have to, uh, a minute. Okay, pet twenty eight, pet twenty eight. That's it. The class number two three nine four five. Sign up with those two class, and uh, even I'm not here for for forty five days, and I need to join to Oli. Please join me. Five minutes, yes, sir. Oh, yeah. And uh, I have this uh, working hard for the flyer, but is I have to get approval for the printer. We will come up later, and I will pass it on to everyone. And thank you. Here you go. Here's Nina that made the cover. <laughs> She's throughout the catalog because she bribed me. Maybe I can get a free ticket to Thailand. <laughs> but 
you have to be careful what you say. I said, Nita, if you go to Thailand and you wear an Ollie t-shirt, we'll put some of your pictures in the catalog. <laughs> 5,000 pictures of Ollie. <laughs> oh, that's it. You have to be careful what you say. But all of these ladies are from Thai. And they're all the members that Nita recruited. Some of them don't even speak English. I don't know how she convinced them, but she took them over to the, to the student store and brought Cal State Dominguez Hills t-shirts. Then she came back and reported that some of the mothers and grandmothers called up their grandkids. See, I got an ID from Cal State Dominguez Hills. I have a t-shirt. I'm in college. What about you? That's how we do it in Ireland. <laughs> so was there anyone else that, that we talked about coming up and talking about something new? Um, I'm going to make this quick. So on page 22, In the interest of time, I'm just going to go ahead and read this, but I will briefly let you know, I worked 39 years for the American Red Cross, and uh, a lot of people don't know this. There's two parts to the American Red Cross. One is what's called our national office. Well, I'm retired now, but I retired five years ago. Uh, one is our national office, which is located in Washington, D.C. You hear about disasters and emergencies and all that. Okay, that's the whole division that handles all that. The other division is the one that collects all the blood for all the hospitals. And for many years, the Red Cross uh, collected almost all the blood in Southern California. Um, in 2004, we moved to Pomona, and I was traveling all the way to Pomona every day. Um, and, but that is the blood services, okay? And they have a research and education department. And I worked uh, 39 years for that department. And over that time period, believe it or not, I went from developing little black and white negatives, pu putting them inside of ammonia to turn them blue. And I can only do one at a time. So if one of our researchers had a hundred slides, I was there all night. <laughs> but what I'm, I'm mentioning that because you can see, uh, and I'll be talking about this during the class uh, that I'm going to be teaching. Uh, I mention that because it goes to show you what we have today in the digital realm. Um, actually, I won't take up, most of you have a catalog and you can read this in the interest of time. Just go ahead and read uh, page 22. But I'll just read part of it. This presentation will give a brief overview, overview of film, still photography, and videotape recording, and other now outdated imaging systems leading up to the start of the digital revolution in imaging, which is what we experience today and has now become quite routine for most everyone in their daily lives. We will also look at some of the new technologies that are currently available to consumers to better enhance their digital imaging experience. So that's going to be on Wednesday, uh, May 29th, um, here in one of the classrooms here from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Thank you. And I'm teaching free form hat making class, and it's on page eight. It's three Tuesdays. The first class starts February 12th, and there's three spots left. There's, men can also take the class. It doesn't have to be just for women because you wear hats too, right? So um, you'll be making a free-form straw you, by pinching. Um, you add in extra straw to it or extra fabrics to it. And so it's basically hand-forming. You have minimum sewing, but not as much as you do in the felt class. So that class is open and there's three spots left. It's $15. I provide most of the materials, and as everyone knows that have taken the class before, your materials are way over what you pay for the class. Mm -hmm. So basically what you need to bring is a hat box so that you can take home your creation each week and not crush it on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Thank you. Um, I, 
I'm Norris Curl. I'm a new member of Ali. I joined 18 months ago and uh, started out with the tennis and I did a little research before I played and I went the, a few times before the class and just sat, sat outside. They didn't even know I was watching them. And I said, okay, this seems to be a senior group. I think, yeah, this might be able to handle this. I, um, played the whole semester, went out there, my knee, those ladies wore me, played me like I was in the military, I was running around the court, left, right, left, right, I just, they really worked me. Um, I took off from, um, one of the ladies in the class asked me, was I going to take the uh, tennis again? I told her, no, I had signed up for the Tai Chi, I was going to, I was going to, but anyway, I've signed up again for it, I'm back, I've got good knee braces here, and uh, I'm really excited about it. But I'm just excited about being a part of the uh, OLLI uh, uh, programs that they have out here. And uh, Eula was gracious enough to ask me to help uh, with the uh, Black History Program Book of uh, Negroes, which is an exciting, we're, we're designing a very exciting class. It's going to be divided into three sessions. It's going to be very interactive. Uh, it's going to be some new things, and I wrote down a few things. Uh, I found out last night that I was invited to come out. They allowed the people that are facilitating to come out the, at the orientation and say something. So thanks for letting me know that I'm here. Um, but you can blog. It's an ongoing conversation about a fabulous story, a strong woman, intelligent woman, a linguistic. She spoke about six language. Uh, anyway, um, and it's an ongoing conversation about the Book of Negroes, which is what they had called this, um, this book where any uh, enslaved um, African migrants who wanted to leave war-torn America uh, during the American Revolution and go to British, the British government had offered freedom there. But the, the conversation's ongoing, it's on Facebook, also it's an it's a app on your phone, I, I downloaded the app last night. And each episode is summarized and key terms are defined and pictures. You know, it's, it's very interactive. But then uh, Eula and I will be providing music. Of course, the film itself, and that's what the class is. It's a, it's a film, and then we have a discussion after each film. We show in that two or three separate times. Uh, but there's also art, and then, of course, the discussion. But it's going to be very, very interactive, very, very motivational. And uh, something I've added, I haven't really checked with Eula or Margo on this, but I'm hoping that I can do it, and that is to offer a certificate of completion for everyone that goes through the entire three, uh, three sessions with us. But it's going to be exciting, it's going to be motivating, it's going to be interactive. I'm inviting everyone to come. Everyone to come. It's going to be during Black History Month, but I hope that all of you are able to make it out. Uh, thank you very much. I don't need to say very much after that, do I? <laughs> I just wanted to point out that um, the Book of Negroes was given to me at, by one of our members. I don't see it her here today. But she said, here, take this, and um, maybe you could do something with it. And I, I looked at it, and I said, oh, man, this will be great. We can do it on um, uh, Natural um, History Month. So um, with that, it's on page 20. You can, on the catalog, and you can, I'm not going to read it, because I'm cutting into your feeding time. <laughs> Go over it, and um, I hope to see you all there. Okay. Thank you. So greetings. One more, and I'll make it short. So, um, the Margo talked about the Ocean Lecture Series, and I'm really excited about that. There are three lectures that I'd like to point your attention to, and that's Dr. Tim Caron. He's Associate um, Assistant Dean in the College of Arts and Humanities. He's doing a guided discussion on Maya Antonia, which is in honor of um, Women's History Month. So I'm hoping that the book club also will pick up on this and support him. I really like to, I'm excited about the lecture series. So there's another lecture, um, two other lectures, um, Ambassador Stephen Rhodes. He is going to be doing two lectures for us, one during Black History Month here um, on, Cal, on the Cal State property, and another one at the, um, I pronounce it the Levi, but it's Levy, I think, the Levy Adult Center. And what's really exciting about this, Ambassador Rhodes was um, once ambassador to Zimbabwe, and um, he worked in the Bush and um, Reagan administration. So I'm really excited to hear what he has to say. And the Levi, or Levy, 
Adult Center. He'll be speaking about George H. W. Bush, the myth, the man, the legend, and a humble road. So I'm really excited about that. We're also looking at here um, what he was very proud of is he was um, instrumental in getting the uh, Martin Luther King Jr. bill signed. And you can actually see him in a picture. He's promising to bring a lot of um, his memorabilia, but you can actually see a picture of him and um, Mrs. Coretta Scott King in the Rose Garden with Ronald Reagan when they were actually signing the bill. The third thing I'm really excited about we're doing is um, we're bringing a Zoom meeting. So we've hooked up with Morris Brown, which is a, a historically black college in Atlanta. And um, we have a presenter coming, at least if she cannot make it here because of the TSA issues that she's had difficulties, you know, in the delays in flight, what she will be doing is Zooming our meeting in. So we'll be conferencing live and seeing her, um, her documentary will be airing for the first time for you, um, her documentary of the historically black colleges in Atlanta and what's happening in Vine City. And she's my sister. <laughs> so it's exciting about that. She's actually Miss 2018-2019 Miss Morris Brown. She was their homecoming queen. So a grandma for a homecoming queen. Yay, Ollie. Uh, so I'm excited about that. With that, I'm going to pass it back to Lamargo and thank you for letting me have your attention. So she tells me not to say that next to the sister. <laughs> because they might not be talking. But she was actually going to come out. This is going to be a special event for us. Um, we originally booked it. It's going to be, uh, for lack of a better term, a webinar. Where we're going to project it on the screen. We'll be interactive and you will be able to talk. But she had made plans to fly here. She blames it on the president because she doesn't trust the TSA. She can't get to the airport and air traffic controllers. But she was actually going to come come out to uh, to meet and greet us. So I think we covered pretty much of the new uh, digital image HBCUs memories. Of course, there's uh, a few other ones, and we have a few flyers that's hopefully left in the back. But the flowers were meant mostly for um, things that we omitted with the catalog that were not in the catalog. And hopefully all of you are getting the, week, the weekly email that I send out. Okay, and hopefully um, that the idea is that we cover things that's going to happen in the next week uh, that I forgot about the week before. <laughs> so that you guys will know if there's any changes in things. So now let's go ahead and... We'll get, how did they phrase it? Uh, partake, no, she, what did she say about the food? I thought about animals. Let's eat. Um, uh, just let's eat. That's it. Let's eat. And we're going to take about 20, 25 minutes. Please introduce yourself to any new member. New members that are, are first time here, please raise your hand so we'll know who to talk to. Okay. Introduce yourself to the new members. Let them know that they're welcome and, and meet and greet. And then we'll get started back with the last of the orientation. Whatever time we have, we'll just go over a few new things. Okay. to find the PowerPoint remote. Last year was our 15th anniversary and we did quite a few things, but it, we're still with that. I wanted to just to point out again that there's 122 colleges. I often get calls from some members asking about, well, my friends live or my family lives in this state and I'd like to see if there's an Ollie. So you're all welcome to, if you're interested in sharing the Ollie experience with your family that's out of state. The Ollies are only in the United States, in all 50, all 50 states. There are colleges and universities, and the state of California has more Ollies than any other state. Lifelong learning. We kind of know what that is, so I'm not going to read that, but I did want to to emphasize what has changed since we became retired, lifelong learner. So it says 1966 to 2016. This is important. This is what we need to learn. Okay. As he said, 66, long hair. Now we're looking for long hair. We were, we're, we're getting and digging to the kegs, you know, big kegs, all cooled up. Now we got EKG. You just shook the letters. 
Acid rock, acid reflux. I couldn't even pronounce that back in the day. Moving to California because it's cool. Moving to Florida because it's warm. Trying to look like Marlon Brando or Liz Taylor. Trying not to look like Marlon Brando or Liz Taylor. We were all in the seeds and stems. Now we talk about roughage. Hoping for a BMW? Hoping for a, can't say that word. You guys just had the last name. Going to a new hip joint. Getting a new hip joint. Rolling stone, kidney stones. I understand those are very painful. Screw the system. Now I would say upgrade the system. Disco to Costco. <laughs> Who can tell me what Costco's name before they went to Costco? Dry not. And we call it the $100 Club that soon moved to the $200 Club. Parents begging you to get your hair cut. Children begging you to get your hair shaved, <laughs> your head shaved. Passing the driver's test, passing the vision test. Okay, whatever. Now it depends. <laughs> we talked about this in the past, but we do. Even though we're retired, we're still taking care of so much. I really like this slide because it really emphasizes our group. We're living 29 more years than the future generation, the past generations, right? And with that, we don't know how to handle the challenges of now, I need to go home and take care of my mother. I had a member call me, she says, I have to lie to my parents to come to Ollie. Yeah. Don't you remember some days like that? <laughs> to come to Ollie, she's got to lie to her parents. Because she flew from Hawaii to come back home to take care of her two parents, right? And now they want to keep track of her, where she's going <laughs> on her time. But that's the new 29 years, and which is good. This was one of our flyers that we had, but I really put it up for the quote on the bottom. This is us. We make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we, by what we give, right? Very, very. Churchill, William S. That wasn't supposed to happen. The dean told you, but it's up in print. 16,456 and 80 cents. That's what's raised that you gave, and we want to really thank you for that. We, we surpassed everything for that grant. Okay, the grant was a start, but any nonprofit organization, the life of that, of that organization must raise funds. Because as I was saying to you before, not extended education or the college, or anyone on this campus gives the Ollie program any monies. We can, we can pretty much use, and we are students of the college, but we receive no funds. Extended education doesn't receive any funds from the state. They are a self-sustaining group. So all of their donations, as I said to you, about 200,000 in kind comes from extended education because they believe in us and lifelong learning. So this was, uh, you'll see in your uh, in your catalog, it was just to thank uh, the people for uh, uh, enriching Ali by donating and a couple of events that we have. And here's the list of, some of the list of the people that generously gave to us. That's all in your catalog, so we don't need to do that. Uh, if you decide that you're going to give, and we hope that you will, you have to put CSUDHPF for Philanthropy Foundation. I think that's what the PF stands for. And this is our web page, and that will change. I was pointing out that we're no longer in the Ali 15th anniversary, and we should upgrade it to Enrich Ali, and we will do that. Here again, these are some of the, a couple of snapshots of uh, a database that tells me how many members have registered. And the point that I wanted to make on this was, last year, and the end of our physical year is June 30th, we had 563 members. We went from 502 to 563, and part of the grant was that we increased our membership by 10%, so we increased, we, we met that and we increased it. 
But right today, before I came out here, I checked. We're already at 549 members. Now, you must applaud because the looks on my face is said, well, what does that mean? For this program, this program to continue, every year we reset the clock on June 30th. And you have to re-register. Normally we don't get to 500 to like the sixth month. In December we were already at 500. But the minimum requirement to keep an OLED program is you must maintain 500 members per year. So that's a key indicator of why I track that. And we're doing great. Well, you're doing great. Just to know that we typically uh, support OLED uh, in the South Bay. This Ollie, uh, not so much Long Beach, even though we do have people from Long Beach, and Long Beach, some of uh, our members go to Long Beach. Um, but we're all over the South, we're all over the South Bay. Even though that this map, uh, which I think was from uh, something I found online, but it shows really all of the areas that we, that we cover. So all of your friends and neighbors that don't know about Ollie, please share and uh, let them know about the campus here. Benefits, the list is long. But the one that I want to really highlight, and I do find it on page 55, especially the new people, is the reduced annual parking pass. Uh, no one on this campus escapes paying for parking, including staff. I think the only ones, I'm sorry, police force, all right? We kind of pay for them, we let them park so that they will have. On campus, we have the a sheriff station on campus, making it very, very safe uh, to that. But everyone, including the professors, the working staff, the dean, the extended education, the colleges, they all pay for parking. All right. We are the only group that they discounted $20 a year for parking and we can park everywhere that's not marked, all right? This is third year. I don't know how they made that arrangement, but it's the best thing for us. We've been having challenges because the school is changing. They're building several new facilities uh, on campus, and so as they tear down these, the old ones where they're gonna put the new ones on, they're putting strains on room space and we're seeing it here. Out of the 11 rooms that the Dean talked about in the extended education, which all of our classes and, and events are held here, we're down to maybe like five. I believe that we're fortunate because most of our classes start at 10 and end at 3.30. So we've got a slot that there's maybe not a lot of students, but actually there are students now coming to this side because they're showing classes. And even worse than that, Typically in the fall, they will bring in 5,000 plus new students, and all of them driving. <laughs> it used to be, they call it a commuter school. So not only are they coming during the daytime, if you come here in the evenings, it's just as full, okay? So I've been thinking about, and maybe not at this time, but some comments, trying to figure out when we can hold open house. And so far the suggestions are maybe Saturdays or Fridays. And I was even thinking today that maybe we might start at nine o'clock instead of 10. Around 8.30, 9 o'clock, there's not a spot to find for parking. If you do not get here early, you're not parking on the campus unless you're way on the other side of the university and that's too far for us to walk. Matter of fact, it's too far for me to think about walking, okay? So, the reduced annual parking pass, there's a lot of other things, but also note that each OLLI member should receive a catalog. So if you're not receiving it, maybe I have the wrong address or whatever, let me know. She has a few that she can give to you, and I know I have a couple requests, they're gonna come with some additional ones, so do not worry about that, we'll get your catalogs. I put this up, and uh, we won't have a lot of talk, but the campus has a safety escort service. You know, several of our members, they like to come to the library, do research and study after hours, 
Sunday, but parking is even enforced on Sundays. But they have an escort service that will escort you to the car day or night, okay? Passport hub, notary services, and get your uh, international student ID card. All of these are done by extended education. Um, I'm gonna skip this because we're running so short of time, but all of the classes for you who are comfortable with your smartphones and the internet, you'll see in the catalog that uh, I'm sorry, on the online webpage that will have this Gmail calendar. And in this Gmail calendar is every course or event for per semester. So in this case, I'm showing, here you see the OSHA lecture series. Uh, I think this was done by um, Dr. Sloan. But if you click on you will see the details, including the course numbers. So hint, when the catalogs first come out, and now we've got more members, there's still a limited amount of class space. So the people who know how to get to the system fast will be able to get in classes which we have limitations on. As soon as I go to print, to the catalog, this is done. It takes two weeks for you to get the printed copy. So there's two weeks of time for people who are comfortable with, even on your phone, you can get all the information that's in the catalog out of this Gmail calendar. Uh, we talked about, we're really happy about the Black History Month events, the Book of Negroes, the Inside Viewpoint, uh, Ambassador Rhodes is gonna do two for us, uh, the historical black colleges. CAMS, our annual field trip, is full. Uh, and then we have Salim, who's done one, and uh, Dr. Gamage. They are all doing uh, some black history. And the college has several events also happening for Black History Month. And they will produce a calendar that I hope I'll be able to send out to you where you'll have all of that information in one place. The Taste of Ali, if you haven't, I'm sorry, Taste of Ali, for the Ultra Lecture Series, when I published the catalog, I did not have all the information about the speakers and lecturers. So we put together a flyer, that the final concise flyer. If you do not have this information, it's one that was sent in the uh, weekly email. But it has all the listings, all the dates and the time. This is the final copy and it's complete. It's gonna be a very interesting uh, uh, OSHA lecture series, both at the Levi Adult Center in Torrance and here in the campus and most of the OSHA lectures are here in the auditorium. I wanted to show this picture. Uh, this is something new that we just put in there. But our Ollie members, of course we travel, um, we have many members that travel all the time, all year. But we had a few of them that took my hint and they wore Ollie t-shirts and so we put them in print. The majority of the pictures are from the Cuba group. Then we have uh, Nita and some of the, the um, Thailand. And then we, we had a, a member or two that went to Bulgaria. I don't know if you guys remember, uh, Bulgaria was, uh, what do you call it, study abroad? We partnered with the uh, uh, extended education and she went to study about Bulgaria. Uh, she's not here today so to tell, to tell us about it, but she was really happy with the event and what happened. Okay. The ESL Conversation Partners Club. We've been doing this for several years and we're trying to make it um, more official and, and have more information so we can have volunteers to come in and have conversations with our young Chinese visiting students. They do it twice a year, February, and then sometime in June, I believe. And I'm, where is Melvin Spears? Is Melvin still here? Please stand up. I'm gonna ask Melvin, in front of all of you, so he can't tell me no, <laughs> to be the coordinator for the ESL. So go by and see him if you're interested. We're trying to get the dates and solidify, but they kind of change a little bit because they come from China. 
When they get here from China, okay, when they're in China, they say, we're gonna do this, 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 this here. Then they get there and it says, oh, I wanna go to Disneyland, all right? So then the schedule changes. So it's hard on us because, you know, we plan by our calendar. But I'd like to see, it's, it's a really rewarding experience. You don't have to know any Chinese, right? They want to practice their English. So we just sit in front of them, ask them questions. Uh, you know, who's their favorite basketball player? And he's trying to tell me in Chinese what it is. So I said, go up on the board, go to Google, because they got Google. And he's talking about Michael Jordan. <laughs> But it was nowhere near the name Michael Jordan. <laughs> Maybe it was in Chinese. This year, we're going to try to organize, or we have, a trip to Indian Wells for the tennis tournament in March. The tennis have been going for several years, at least maybe three or four, uh, to the Indian Wells for the, their annual field trip. It's their ATP the women's and the men's qualifying rounds, so it's free. And we're gonna get a couple vans, and we're gonna ride out to Indian Wells, enjoy the day, and they may have something to eat and then come back home. But if you're interested in that, please uh, you know, leave me a word or something. It is open to all the Ollie members, but the tennis members who are registered will have first choice of the vans. For the years before this, we would just drive, we'd get a group together, we'd drive up. But it was really an exciting event for me. Um, I like to try to stumble around tennis. I want to call it, in the shower I say I'm playing tennis, you know, that I'm really good. But uh, I've never really followed and got to see the players. But you get to see all the top players, including Serena. She's back. She stopped coming to Indian Wells for a while, but she's now coming back to Indian Wells. So it's a really great, what you say about a baby? She had a baby. Does that affect her tennis? <laughs> that that doesn't count. <laughs> we can't give her. We can't give her no points for that. <laughs> Again, we're going to talk about the special events, but what we call the pre-move performances. This is a great um, partnership with the theater on campus. You can only attend. You would call them. Um, What's another term? Dress, pre dress, dress rehearsal. Great. Right? It's always the day before the, the original date. We get to see three, two plays and one uh, musical for five dollars. Right? So you, you really can't beat that to see the, the students come out and the study and uh, and do these plays and, and things. So I'm promoting uh, dancing makes you smarter. Cause now I'm dancing, so I know I'm smarter. <laughs> Saturdays, they have ballroom and social dancing, and we've had so much fun uh, in that class. Jeff Hendricks is still teaching it, and I do, this time I have it in the catalog, so. Uh, this is for mostly for new, but I will hang around to answer any questions about uh, your yellow forms, which you use to register to become in the program and to register for courses. Uh, this one's for the annual membership. This is the course registration. This is probably the most important portion of the yellow form. On the very last page of the yellow form is a listing of all the courses for this semester, right, with the course numbers. If the course is free, and there is quite a few of them that we have free, it says place a zero in the right column. So fun and games, free to all the members, but you want to take that course, you just place a zero. If it's a course that requires a minimum fee, in this case is crocheting for health, is $15, then you place the $15 in that. Take it to registration, they will total it up, you will write a check or a credit card, and you're registered for the class. Right? It's just that easy. There's nothing else more required than that. So you go through the select, but I want to point out the thing in the blue. There are occasions when I think it's valuable that you be able to invite your friends and family to an olive program. But I need to have registration and account of the numbers 
uh, for many reasons, my annual report, but also especially for an event that requires food. So on occasions, not all of them, ones that I think would be of interest uh, to your friends, I sometimes open it to non-OLE members, right? If there's a charge, it will list a charge, but most of the times these are free. So that you can invite a non-OLE member, and all I have to do is call or come down and register and click on or check off the non-OLE member only. And they're gonna ask your name and address or something like that that goes in the database. But then you can attend the courses of those. So whenever you see those, please, OLE members, don't click and don't tell them, because you're taking a spot from someone else, okay? Sometimes I understand that the print is getting smaller. Because if we have 26 new, I have to squish it into one page. We're working on that, but mostly we want to make sure that you guys have something that's uh, worked for your time to come to Ollie. Uh This was for Jazz, and I want to thank you for coming out. Thank you. All right. Any questions? If they do, it would be with uh, extended education. I don't know that we would we would be involved because uh, we, we don't. Okay. Okay. There you go. That's Anisha Barton. She's the social media specialist for extended education. So that. Uh, Again, we had to bring her to come over with a little bit of food. Uh, <laughs> we should take pictures, but anything on social media for extended education, not the college, that's who you will see. Okay? Yes, here. Where do we turn in the yellow registration? Registration is next door. As I'm facing out, it's to your right. And anyone here, we will, we will show you that. How about the parking? The parking pass, once you register, come back into here and I will sign a form and show you where to go pick up your parking pass. Okay? Is the membership for just one semester and each semester you renew, or is it for an entire year? <laughs> She's asking with membership by semester. Membership is an annual membership, and our, me our, our membership goes from July 1st to June 30th. We're on the same physical year as the campus. So it's $30 for one year, but it will end this year because it starts in July, June 30th. And in between now and there, be two semesters, spring and summer. There would be spring and summer that would be included with that. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. The input deadline for the next step. The curriculum committee, we're working on that now, but I would, I would advise you, even in summer, is that you start to, um, uh, that you contact us, I will give you a link that has our calendar and has placeholders on dates that's available. Because it's all based off of available dates once I'm able to secure the room. Be mindful that we share a standard ed education complex with over 60 to 80 programs that extended education runs out of the same complex. So I have to get it in the system, get approval. Once they, they say, you've got that room, then I can give you a confirmation whether you have it or not. Okay, just one minute. No, he's gonna talk. I'm gonna ask a question, then I can do the last one. On the form, at the bottom one, the photo goes, there's two little black lines. Does that mean we pay separate for that, or what? <coughs> I think she's talking about the and, and their parking. Any other questions before I give one last comment to Rick Irons? Okay, Rick. Okay. I just want to, I teach the uh, watercolor class that we started last uh, semester, I guess we call it. Everybody in the class except one had no experience in painting in watercolor. Uh, I've had some experience, mostly I did toy design and graphics and other things like that, but I like to paint. And I was just overwhelmed with how good it was. So last year, was, my class was <laughs> stop showing off. I can. <laughs> so 
So anyway, last year we were filled up uh, right away. Unfortunately, some people who had signed up didn't show up. Uh, but we went on anyway and did very well. And I just wanted to let you know, if you want to sign up for the watercolor class, and we're on page uh, nine in the catalog, uh, do that. But if you find it's full, uh, I'll be here for a few minutes. I can give you my phone number at home, and after the first or second week or third week goes by and they're still not showing up, come on in. Okay, so that's the way we'll do that and take care of, of class. We only take, take 15 students. Uh, last year we had seven, was it? So, uh, but we did good work. That's just a few things of, that we did. So anyway, I just wanted to say that and invite you. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed doing it, and I'm happy to be able to tell you about it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Since we have a large group here today, I want to encourage people to uh, volunteer. Eula should be up here speaking, because we have a Juneteenth program we do every year, and Eula Slater is the coordinator for that. And we need volunteers. We need volunteers to uh, come with your ideas. I'm sure everyone here has something they can contribute. You don't have to be on the committee, but you might have a good idea. And please let Eula know. <laughs> and then also, I'm going to start early. Every year there's the uh, Taste of Ali that's in December. It's never too early to start, and we need volunteers for that. Even though it's in December, we don't want to wait until November 29th for that program. So see Lamargo or Nicole about that. So contribute something, and of course we do take donations for prizes. I was told, I'm not gonna call any names, that uh, the grand prize wasn't grand. So we wanna, we wanna make the grand prize grand this time. Although we know that same person won't win, I'll make sure of that. But anyway, we wanna make it grand. Okay, so any donations, small, little, whatever, see me. But I really want to thank you for coming out, uh, Open House, especially when you've been to Open Houses before, and ours, and our orientation and things. But I just see this as a, as a way to meet, mingle, associate, you know, get together, and it's official that they let me have a little food uh, for you. We'll try to get a, a little bit more. Uh, so, but uh, I know that now that I'm single, what's the name, you guys just took my meal. <laughs> I don't have nothing to take home now at night. I'm gonna have to go home and try to figure out how to cook something. <laughs> I want you I want you really to feel bad now because I didn't count on that meal. <laughs> but if there's any other questions, I will be here probably about an hour to uh, sign for any parking passes for the new people, the new registering. Registration has been open for a while. There's several of the classes that have uh, limitations. And most of those limitations are by their instructors, that I can't handle more than 10 or eight. 
right? And I cannot break that because that's a limitation of theirs. But we did have a class that we figured out a creative idea, and hopefully this will work with maybe other classes. There's a class called um, Chinese Tea Tasting with Claire Lee. Okay, for any of you that has signed up to that class, there's four days, but she would only take eight at a time. So as you registered, we assigned you to a certain date. If you don't know your date, then please check with us. But the first eight, second eight, third eight, fourth eight. Okay, and maybe we can do that with some other things like Tai Chi, um, that we can't get enough, um, you know, just not enough time with, with that type of limitations uh, of the classes. So we're looking. Anything else and we're, we're adjourned. Okay.